Run it up, run it up, run it up, run it up. You gotta put in that work, dog. I put the kingdom first. I know that you gotta wait for your turn. Today, from Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. We'll see Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Minnesota Vikings and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. the punter Jake Camarda is set to do the honors and off we go now from Tampa and they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25 Minnesota's offense and QB Kirk Cousins set to go here not bad for a fourth round draft pick well over 100 career starts now and the chemistry with his top targets really on point they spend a lot of time in practice and after practice making sure the routes are run well and he knows exactly where they're going to be on the field and when they get open he delivers first play and a first pass for cousins right side it's the tight end hawkinson and he'll be out of bounds across the 30 yard line a good safe pass there right off the bat. That's almost a rhythm play. That's what we like to call it. Get them into rhythm early, something safe, something they're confident about, something they feel good. And once that's completed, under a heavy rush, and down he goes. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. And just two plays in, and Charles already their first sack defensively. Yeah, how about that? That didn't take long, did it? And now they look at third down, and that's another time to try and go and get the quarterback, too. Cousins with work to do after the sack as he brings his guys up on a third and long. They'll drop to throw, and that is incomplete. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. Fielded at the 33. Call that a 41-yard punt, six yards on the return, and the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Tampa Bay coming out along with a man who needs no introduction, the great Tom Brady. Well, we've all seen what Tom Brady can do on a football field for a couple of decades now, but how about his most impressive accomplishment? Moving to a different franchise and taking them to a Super Bowl title as well. Not many players can continually stiff arm Father Time the way that he has. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10 at the 39-yard line. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Now, during that run, an injury here. We've got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Now, the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. On first down, Brady. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. A first carry for Rashad White. Two-yard 
Jets on the pickup, and that's all they needed to move the sticks. Well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. And this one almost intercepted. Not a good throw there. Nearly an opening drive, INT. Well, they've been back on the heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Throwing is Brady on third down. He completes this to Russell Gage. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 18. Give him 22 there on the third down conversion. That's his first catch of the game and an impressive one against multiple defenders. And how about that start? Really aggressive. Yeah, there was double coverage out there, but that didn't stop them at all. They went right at it and defeated it on that play. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Up the gut, Fournette. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? And the Bucs are going to have it first and goal as they'll take this down to about the three. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Here we go now on first and goal. Brady going to throw. And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, Bucks. The three-yard touchdown pass. And the Buccaneers are on the board first here this afternoon. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. I thought the days of the fake extra point were numbered once they moved these kicks back to the 15. Apparently, I was mistaken. Yeah, I was wondering who was ever going to try to do this. In fact, I quit wondering. I didn't think it would ever happen. Taking a fake from the 15-yard line to try and pick up an extra point, I didn't think anyone would ever call this. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. And the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And the last drive, the first drive for them, not very good. Three and out. What do they go to here? Well, you don't look down at your play sheet and say, this is what the problem is. Hey, let's find out who my playmakers are. Get the ball in their hands, and maybe the offense will move a little bit Sometimes better. it's more important to get it to the right people rather than dialing up the right number. Exactly. Or the, the right play, yeah. That too. <laughs> They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. Cousins. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Now Cousins. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they have to give up the football again after this one. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. This is fielded at the 27th. 
A nice return that time gets 12 yards back. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Tampa Bay, they're getting ready to set up shop here for their second drive. Well, just two series in here, Charles, but everything's gone to script so far. They got a touchdown on their first drive. Their defense holds, and now they've got a chance to take a two-score lead. And to co-sign with you, exactly the start they scripted up. And really, that kind of start, that can set the tone for the game for them. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. Now that was an excellent run, and when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job, and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block, but the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes, so when they block... And this is... Oh my goodness! He pulled it in one-handed! A one-handed catch, that's one thing, but with a defender right there, that was a heck of a play. It used to be that one-handed catch was instinctive in a game. Now it's a practiced move. They work on it before, after, during practice sessions. It becomes part of their repertoire, and it pays off. So a big play as it gets them all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. Brady gives this to White. And this will be a gain of six when it's all said and done. Down to the 15 from the 21. Six nothing, our score after one. Second and four. Throwing now is Brady. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. A missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive. They had a chance there to finish things off. Didn't get it done. I guess that's why a lot of those guys do not play offense. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. This defense has certainly played well so far in this game, and the coverage has been tight on just about every throw. Forced a few here so far in this game, and now it brings up fourth down. And the holder's going to keep it. He's going to try to run for it. The fake field goal catches everyone by surprise. And the Bucs' decision to go for it pays off with six points. I'd have to say we're all a little bit surprised there because at his age, with his speed, or should I say lack thereof, the only rushing touchdowns I would expect are on quarterback sneaks. But here, he found all of his guys covered. He said, why not? And by the way, if that doesn't fire up your team to see the veteran like that risking his body for the touchdown, I don't know what will. Ryan suck up on for the point after. And he's got it to make it now 13 to nothing. That time, a six-play drive. And it was finished by the touchdown run from the 15. The Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. This fielded right at the goal line. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ballgame as they come up first and 10. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Now a throw here, hauled in. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. Two 
Draw play, Cousins to Cook. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in. Your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. And that will be incomplete on a second and long. It's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. 42-yard punt, six on the return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. A good balance attack for that last touchdown drive they had. Now it's time to see if they can do that again. It really becomes a tale of two play callers, doesn't it? The offensive guy, he's in sync. Everything's working pretty well for the defense. Yeah, what's going on on the defensive that's side? That's a tough one because he's prepped all week as well, and he can't get a bead on exactly what they're doing right now. What he needs is one of his guys just to make a big play and disrupt things. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Fakes the give to Fournette. Now Brady. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. They run straight ahead here with White. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Now Brady. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. From a defensive perspective, they had exactly what you want anytime they want to throw the football. There was pressure on the quarterback. They were getting after him, and they tightened down on the receivers. And how about this, a fake? And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt. It doesn't work out. And this defense will take over right near midfield at the 49-yard line. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On play action, Cousins. And down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Joe Tryon Shoyinka showcasing the pass rush. Well, that's a big defensive stop there, and it takes away a lot of momentum from the offense coming off that big completion to prior snap. Give big credit to the defense for bouncing back. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Cousins. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Good reactions there defensively. That screen was a little slow in developing, and they shut that one down with little gain. This ball complete. It's an out route to Thielen. And he's going to be taken down right at the 40-yard line. 
Partner, I think that completion takes the definition of dink and dunk to a different level, doesn't it? It does, and the defense was right there, kind of played into their hands. So now they're going to send out the field goal unit to, as they say, fire away from long distance. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. And this won't get there, won't be online either. It's no good. Off to the right, and the deficit will hold Pat at 13. And now two problems as I see it. First, you missed the kick, which granted was a long one. But second, you set the other guys up a great field position and enough time to maybe get downfield and get a field goal attempt of their own. And he'll get that to Fournette complete. And they'll get this down to the 42-yard line. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucks have a first down. So we've reached the intermission in what right now is a 13-point game. As we toss it an hour or so east of here to Orlando, it's Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has been a hard-hitting affair to this point, and you got to expect we'll see more of the same in the second half. And to bring the action your way, get it right back out to Brandon God. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Bucks with the lead, and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway. And this is going to be returned from the middle of the end zone. And he'll be brought down at the 28-yard line, so the decision to bring it out of the end zone gets him three more. Out come the Buccaneers. They'll have it first to start in the third quarter. Brady and the Bucks now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Looking downfield for Godwin. And got his man complete. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. Excellent execution, and now they're set up nicely. Are they ever? Red zone? I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big play like that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. A shotgun give to Fournette. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. On the draw, this is Fournette. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Leonard Fournette taking it in from 11 yards out as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further and on his way to the end zone shedding the tackle he would not be denied that's what's called finishing the run making sure you power your way through one-on-one -on -one tackle no running back wants to go to the bench and say ah i got stopped just short todd bowles leaving his offense on the field they're going to go for two here And he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. And a little quarterback draw option works to perfection for him. Yeah, it's hard to account for the quarterback in most situations on defense, and that's why the quarterback draw is so successful. Everyone else covered, makes a little fake, runs into the end zone. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. It's the Vikings' turn on offense. We get ready for their first possession of the second half. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Open man, he's got him, the tight end, Hawkinson. 
Now, coaches always harp on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a hit on him, do they? Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. And he will have a Vikings first down, at least at first glance, as he'll spot the football just beyond the marker. They find a way to convert on third and inches. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They run again on first down. Cook will get this to about the 38. Another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, and they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. They'll have to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Now Cousins. Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Levante David gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. Looks like another empty possession here, partner. And I don't think with three scores down in the third quarter, they can truly afford any more the rest of the way. No, especially the way their offense is sputtering. I think you're exactly right. They got to find some answers quickly. And on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. That's pulled in at the 32. A pretty good punt, but a nice 13-yard return. And they will take over first and 10. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. They're just looking to do more of the same. They were good in the first half. They've extended their lead so far here in the second half. I don't know, they're just looking good on all, hitting on all cylinders right now. And sometimes that means a head coach who really has a finger on the pulse of a team may not have anything to say at all. May tell the rest just of the coaches, just, a little bit. just back it off a little bit. This team has it under control. I remember hearing about Bob Knight years ago in oh basketball, <laughs> getting ready to give the final speech before the gold medal game in 84. And on the board, Michael Jordan wrote, had written, Coach, after all we've been through, there's no way we're losing tonight. He didn't even give a pregame speech. Wow, interesting. Well, right now, no speech is needed. 41 yards rushing for him now, and he's carried the ball just five times. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it, but a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. So first and 10, and if they score on this drive, might have to start digging in our second half blowout material. Brady. This is caught by Evans. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. And while we may be looking at the scoreboard, this offense certainly is not because they're showing no signs of backing down, even with a three-score lead here in the third quarter. I think they keep taking their shots. They've seen blown leads happen throughout this league. They don't want to fall victim to it themselves. Throwing on first down is Brady. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. The second and 10 now as we roll along in the third quarter from Tampa. Fournette running out of the gun. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? And Evans hauls it in. Touchdown, box. Mike Evans with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Buccaneers will add on to their lead here in the final minute of the third. So another touchdown there, and even though we're still just here in the third quarter, kind of hard now to see them giving up this lead. 
And this is just an offense that's imposing its will right now. You name it, they're able to do it. If you're the play caller, whatever you want to select is there. You want to run it, you want to throw it, pick a play, any play. They're rocking and rolling right now. Extra point up and good by Suckup. And it is 28-0. Bucks ready for the kickoff. And here we go. It's in the air. This taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. But well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, let's just say it's been unusual. Back now in Tampa. A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. This offense so far on third down, they've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and five. Open man is Osborne. He's got him. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Move the chains. A gain of seven on third down. From the 34 now, here's first and ten. To the air again, it's Cousins. Swinging this out wide here for Cook. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. From the 39, Cousins out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And they'll get him down on the other side of midfield. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. And the pressure too much that time as Cousins goes down. Vita Vea never giving up. He works his way to the QB for a loss of 12. Well, it's obvious, but I can't help but say it here. It's never a good day when the opposing defense has more sacks than you have points. The win seems likely, but this defense is still playing for something here. They see that zero on the scoreboard, and they don't want that to change. Throwing on second and long. Cousins. Oh, that's into a double team, and it's intercepted. It's Devin White, the linebacker, and the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. Well, offensively, Charles, hard to put a silver lining on this one. No secret that they had to take chances with a score where it is, and it leads to a turnover. I love how you paint the picture, partner, because you're exactly right about that one. Look at the empty stairs on that sideline. This is one of those games where you just want to go crawl under a rock until it's over. Fournette, a first down carry. And he'll fight forward on the straight-ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. They'll run it again with Fournette. And he works his way free all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone. 58 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. And Brandon, this is where it pays to have a big back who can take over a football game, especially in the fourth quarter when you've got the lead, your ability to not just wear people down, but close games out. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They'll go up the middle with White. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. Nine yards on the play there, and it sets him up first and goal. Just 
Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Buccaneer football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. And they just continue to roll. And Charles, for you and I, we want the close games. But for them, it has to be so nice to enjoy this big cushion. I can't remember the last time we saw them play this loose and have this much fun. I think they'd love to be able to capture this game carry it with them from week to week and be able to execute like this in all the rest of their games. Extra point try now for Succo. Oh, and now they're going to fake it. And he will not make it to the goal line. It's his try for two is going to come up empty. But that's little consolation to this defense as they have been porous all game long. I know they're not asking me, but I'll give you my opinion anyway. I think it's time to erase that play from the call sheet. I guess they figure with the big lead they can experiment a little bit. But all in all, just go ahead and put that play on ice. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and he'll take over at the 25. Minnesota's offense takes over possession. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests. But in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. Cousins on third and two. Open man is stealing his complete. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. A first down for Minnesota. Cousins finding Thielen. Nice game there, partner. But you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. Now the hit comes, and Cousins lost the football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they will take over at the 29-yard line. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through, and that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. Fournette on the counter. And not a lot of daylight. Not really any daylight inside as he's going to be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Brings up second down. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. On second down, they'll run with White. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, Fournette. That'll make it fourth down after a loss of one. And well, they could just run this clock out, but here is the field goal unit on fourth down. This one from 46 yards out. For the winning team here, Charles, and that's about as big and clean of a win as you could hope for in the National Football League. No turnovers. While you mean while you force turnovers, you didn't allow any points, and you put up a bunch of points. What an effort. And Brandon, I just have to ask you, that's all the stuff that we saw happen today. Those are statistics, numbers, the whole deal. But my question is, how does one team come ready to play, and the other one, obviously, not ready at all? Boy, I mean, I obviously don't have an answer to that, but that was the story from the get-go. One side was awake and ready, and the other just seemed to sleep.
So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt. This has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.